Welcome back to News 46. Measles and pertussis, or whooping cough, have been effectively controlled in the United States with the use of vaccines. However, recent outbreaks of these vaccine-preventable diseases have prompted many to examine why this is happening. A review of recent research looks at whether the reluctance of some parents to have their children vaccinated plays a role in these outbreaks. This health tip is brought to you by Desert View Hospital and Mountain Valley Physicians Group. Don't put your health on hold. We have time for you. Call us to schedule your appointment, 775-751-7100. Hello, how are you? Most parents do the right thing and get their children vaccinated. Even if you go out and do the right thing, your child's risk depends on other people as well. Like whom they interact with on the playground, in school, and even within their own family. If there is a group of people which are unprotected, they can increase the risks of even those who are vaccinated. Dr. Saad Omer from Emory University and his colleagues reviewed published reports for both measles and pertussis. They specifically looked at the role vaccine refusal plays in outbreaks of both diseases. In the post-elimination era, uh, for measles, vaccine refusal has played a role in these recent outbreaks. A majority of those cases occurred in those who did not get vaccines for philosophical or religious reasons. The contribution of vaccine refusal is higher in early part of epidemics compared to later parts, indicating that uh, vaccine refusers provide that those pockets of susceptibility, that tinder that can start the fire of an epidemic. For whooping cough, outbreaks are harder to control because the vaccine's protective immunity can wane over time. Waning immunity is a problem. But even in the context of waning immunity, you have uh, vaccine refusal, which is playing a role. It is in everyone's benefit that everyone stays protected. Catherine Dolph, The JAMA Report. Thanks so much, Catherine. One of the more important public health achievements in the last 10 to 20 years has been the elimination of measles from the United States. Former Toronto Mayor Rob Ford has died. Ford, who had been battling an aggressive form of cancer, served for a decade as a city councillor before being elected mayor in 2010. The 46-year-old Ford gained international notoriety after a video surfaced in May of 2013 that apparently showed him using crack cocaine. He was re-elected to the city council in 2014 and was serving in that role at the time of his death. Great Basin College now has a nursing program. We caught up with two instructors to find out more. Well, the Department of Labor has given $2.2 million to establish these two programs in Winnemucca and in Pahrump. And nursing is a big industry right now. A lot of people um, are needed in the medical field in general, right? Yes, there's a huge need for nursing and that's one of the reasons why we have established these satellite offices in smaller communities through Great Basin College. We serve a large population and these two satellites make it easier for our nursing students to receive the um, clinical and the um, skills um, aspect of the education here locally in their communities. How's the th three students doing right now? They are doing fantastically well. They are well supported by the community, by the clinical sites that have uh, formed relationships with the college, and they've already been approached for job offers as soon as they graduate. What's the program consist of? The program consists of, it's a two-year program. It's an um, associate's degree of nursing program. There is um, four semesters of um, pretty intense didactic um, education along with lab um, which develops their skills and then they also spend um, a quite a bit of time in the clinical setting which is in either hospitals or outpatient clinics of various um, uh, kinds based on the, uh, the, the topic of the course that they're taking. Um, what types of students are you taking into this associate's degree? Is it somebody that already has nursing experience or um, who can qualify for this? Well, we will take any kind of student, and there's a wide uh, demographic that do apply and are accepted, so there's really no, no limitation whatsoever. They would, uh, to begin, come into my office mm -hmm. on the campus here in Calvada and get advisement so that they follow the, the 
uh, most efficient path towards the application process. But um, any age, any background can um, start the process. And what kind of uh, requirements do they have to meet for the classes? They, there are general education um, requirements, just like most any de um, professional pathway. But there's also, um, we develop a, um, it's an application process and it's developed on points, so grades do matter. Mm -hmm. There's, um, we do have a CNA, which is a Certified Nursing Assistant program here. That is one of the requirements, and so they need to go through that program. But we also offer that here at, at the Great Basin College here in, in Pahrump as well. So it's right here accessible to them. And the annual Nathan Adelson Hospice Senior Resource Carnival is being held tomorrow, Wednesday, at the Saddle West. Tomorrow, free hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Senior Resource Carnival. This is our fifth annual. Wow. Where's it at? Saddle West. And it is from 10 to 2. And as I say, there's free food. There's Danish in the morning. There's hot dogs. I might add, um, Assemblyman Oscarson is actually treating everyone to the lunch. Oh wow. That's his gift for us. And then um, so what kind of booths are going to be there because I know that there's this is a place to definitely get like a one-stop shopping. Yeah you know it can really vary. We have um, law firms represented. We have senior services like Nevada Welfare. Uh, we have Humana. We have healthcare partners. Um, we have home health. We have hospices. Um, so there's really a wide range of anything that we think the seniors might need a little bit of help with. And then, uh, of course, uh, you can find out uh, all about uh, different insurances and health care and anything sure. that you could possibly dream of all at this one location. Sure. Tomorrow? Tomorrow, and actually as a, another added incentive, each of them, because there's no cost for people to have a table there, what I do is ask them to bring a, a raffle prize, a basket. And I have to say the baskets last year were <laughs> magnificent. I saw so those. I know, so people may want to just come and wander through because they might get lucky and win one of those baskets. Exactly, you get a ticket when you come on in, so definitely, and there's lots of giveaways. Lots of giveaways, and we'll start it probably, start giving away probably right around 10.30 or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, people like to just hang out, and that's fine with us too. This is all sponsored by? It's all sponsored by Nathan Adelson Hospice. We're happy to be able to do this for our community. Right. More information on Nathan Adelson Hospice? They can call me, and this is Susan, and the number is 775-291-0541. We'll return with some of the winners of this weekend's Chili Cook-Off. <laughs> 